So in the last lecture, we learned about the normal distribution and how we can use the mean and standard deviation to figure out probabilities and percentages using the empirical rules. However, the empirical rules only work when you go a whole number of standard deviations in either direction. If, however, you are interested in a value that is not a whole number of standard deviations in each direction, well, then we have to figure out a different approach. What we're going to have to do is calculate what we call a z-score. And essentially what we were doing in the last lesson was creating z-scores, yet we didn't even know it. All a z-score is, is it's a measure that tells you how many standard deviations away from the mean the value you're interested in is. So for instance, when we were going one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean, those were z-scores, values a certain number of standard deviation away from the mean. And to calculate a z-score, what we do is we take the value we're interested in, compare it to the mean by looking at the subtraction of them, and then put that distance, put that difference in terms of standard deviations. And we'll see some examples of this. Z-scores are associated with what we call a standard normal distribution or a Z-distribution. So let's go check out what that is. A standard normal or a Z-distribution essentially changes every single value you're interested in into a standardized Z-score. And you can turn any single normal distribution into the standard normal or Z-distribution. All you would do is you would compare all of your values into how many standard deviations away from the mean they are. So let's check out an example using this. The standard normal distribution or the Z distribution always has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That signifies that you're in this standard normal or Z distribution. So let's check out an example to see what I mean by this. Previously, we saw an example using IQ test scores. And we saw the mean score for the IQ test is 100 with a standard deviation of 15. What we would want to do, for instance, is maybe find the percent of people scoring higher than a 106. And we can see that 106 is probably not a full amount of standard deviations away from 100. So essentially what we're interested in is this blue shaded area in our X graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that 106 and we're going to find the z-score associated with it. Then what we'll do is we'll find the percentage or the probabilities in our z-score world and associate them back to our X graph world. So these two graphs are essentially finding the same area. One is in terms of our actual values or X's. The other is in terms of our Z scores or our standard normal graph. And we'll find that in statistics, many times it's only possible to find things in a standardized graph compared to an individual graph of X values. So we're going to be focusing a lot on standardization in this class, standardizing a value into how many standard deviations away from the mean is some value. We'll find the probabilities and percentages in our standardized graph, in this case a Z distribution or a standard normal distribution, and then we'll associate that probability back. So. Let's check out this example. If we were to find the z-score associated with a 106, we would find that 106 is 0 0.4 standard deviations away from our mean. 106, again, is 0 0.4 standard deviations away from our mean. That's how we would interpret a z-score. And so if we wanted to find the percentage of people scoring higher than a 106 or scoring higher than a z-score of 0 
What we would need to use to find that is a Z table or a distribution calculator. Now, if you've taken a statistics class before, probably in high school, you use what's called a Z table. They are, to be honest, a little bit of, a, of an outdated method, which requires you looking at pages, finding Z-scores, using that the Z-scores to find probability, and then somewhat manipulating that probability. Nowadays, software can do all of this in quite simply. So you'll find some links on this video or under this video to access a distribution calculator. You'll also find links in your course resources. And what we're going to use is we're going to use either a web page or you can download a, uh, an app on your phone, which is a distribution calculator. And you can use that app to do all the distributions we're interested in this class. You can find probabilities and percentages using this app for all of the distributions. Now, I'll also post the web page links as well, but it's nice to kind of just have on your phone so you can kind of do what you want on your laptop and calculate these, these probabilities and percentages on your phone. So let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to show you how to use this distribution calculator. Now, the web page version is almost identical to the app version. I suggest you get the app version because it's going to make your lives easier and just in terms of a functionality standpoint. If you have the app version downloaded, you'll notice the first thing it asks you to do is to select a distribution. Now, I'm going to have all of these distribution calculator web pages for you. However, again, the only different step that you're going to have to do is pick or select your distribution. And we're using a, and going over a normal distribution to start. Now, by default, the normal distribution, when you click it, is in terms of a standard normal or a Z distribution. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. That's how we know we're in our Z-score world. So if we want to find a probability or percentage with a specific value, well, what we'll do is we'll input that value as X. And we just turned a IQ score of 106 into the Z score of 0 0.4. And what we're going to want to do when we want to figure out a probability percentage is we'll hit enter if you're using the web page version. And what we'll find is we can select what area we want to find. So by default, it's giving us the likelihood of being larger or having a larger Z-score than 0 0.4. If we wanted to find the area less than, well, we can hit less than. If we wanted the outside area, this is giving us the probability of being greater than 0 0.4 or less than negative 0 0.4. We could also look at the inside probability, the probability of being between a negative 0.4 and a 0.4. So it's nice that we can find all these probabilities and percentages by just inputting our z-score. Now what you may notice is that I do have or you do have the ability to change the mean and standard deviation. Watch, keep in mind the percent of values greater than 0 0.4 on a Z distribution is 34.458%. I'm going to change our mean to the mean of our Z or IQ distribution. I'm going to change our standard deviation to that of, an IQ, of our IQ scores, which is 15. And the value that we were interested in was 106. The probability or percent of people that have an IQ above 106 is estimated to be 34.458%. Exactly what we got in our Z distribution. So what you're probably thinking is, well, what's the point of this? Right? We can do things without turning it into a Z-score. And that is true right now. However, come a week or two from now, we won't be able to change your mean and standard deviation. 
will only be able to work in standardized worlds. So it's really good to get practice standardizing values and you'll be able to check them by alternating your, your mean and standard deviation. This is what a distribution calculator can do for you rather than look at a, a Z table or some other kind of outdated method.